Allah Azza wa Jal from here on is going to talk, it's a long passage, he's going to talk about the on ongoings of a nation that came before, a town, some town, to whom Allah sent a number of messengers. I will give some introductory comments that are important for you to understand the rest of the story, so we don't get caught up in these details later on. But there's one outstanding thing from the last conversation, part one. Here's what it is. You remember I told you how Allah, you know, uh, uh, the truth became clear to them and after that their, their, their hearing was, or, or their, their, there's a wall in front of them, wall behind them, collar on them, etc, etc. They're blocked from the truth entirely. Just make sure you understand that Allah never does that until people make up their mind to reject the truth even after knowing it. Allah never blocks the path to truth for someone who had no idea. So you'll notice in, in, in passage 1, Allah did say that their ancestors were never warned and they are unaware. You remember that? فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ He did not block them. But after the truth, لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The truth became absolutely clear, the word was absolutely manifest to them. They still refused to believe. Now that's a crime that should be punished in this world and the next. And the punishment in this world is that they get no access to thinking properly anymore. They refused to think when they had the chance, and they made up their mind. Actually, they did think, and they did come to the right conclusion, but still didn't live up to it. Fine, have it your way. Now you don't get to think about it. That's Allah's punishment in this world. So that's just a clarity about, clarification about the previous passage. The second thing about, about now is how the Qur'an talks about history. By the way, has history been alluded to already in section 1, that we should learn from history? Where? وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا Behind them there is a wall. If there was no wall behind them, they would have learned from what is behind them. They would have thought about what is behind them, which is history. So now we're going to learn one of those lessons, the lessons from history. But the way the Qur'an approaches history, Allah does not tell us names of places, except very few like Misr. Allah does not take, tell us names of many individuals. You're going to see no names mentioned now. You're just going to call them people who were sent. Allah does not mention dates, chronologies. He doesn't mention them. The Qur'an is the perfect word of Allah, perfectly tight. Yes or no? So if Allah wanted, could He have mentioned all of those things? Yes, He chose not to. And He also chose that the Prophet ﷺ, the best mufassir of all of the mufassirin, the best explainer of the Qur'an ever, could have been who? The Prophet ﷺ. Nobody will explain the Qur'an better than him. He decided not to tell us the names of these towns, the names of these people, the villages, the dates, the chronologies, nothing. You know what that means? But that's not the point. That's just not the point. Not in the Qur'an. But you know what happens to us when we start studying this stuff? We like all the information. We like all the details. We especially like the details that Allah did not mention. And we love those details so much, we stop paying attention to what Allah did mention. It's a tragedy in the study of the Qur'an. So when I studied, for, the, for example, this passage, give them an example. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا Strike an example for them. أَصْحَابَ Qarya, The people of the town, the town. The question arises, what? Which town? Is this New Jersey? Where is this? Is this Sialkot? Where is this town? And so, in our history, you find many, many, many scholars and opinions about this was a town called Antakya, this was a town over here, this was a town over there, this is over here. If that was important, who would have mentioned it? Allah. If this was important, He would have at least said, go find out which one it was. He didn't. That is all a distraction. That isn't the point. We have to make the Qur'an supreme. What it makes important, we make important. What it dismisses, we dismiss. That's how we submit to the Qur'an. That's how we submit to the word of Allah. Our thought process needs to submit to the word of Allah. There are things that are insignificant and they should remain as such. They can be interesting academic exercises, but they don't change the priority. And the Qur'an came to give us the right kinds of priority. It's not just a book where you just want to collect information. Information isn't the point. It's thinking the right way, getting guidance, processing the things, things, things in the correct fashion. So now let's begin. So Allah says, give them an example. When an example is given, it is to, so you can benefit, so you can understand better. I'd like to remind you that in the previous passage, there are three audiences. There are three audiences. 
There's the Prophet himself, Ali Wasallam. So the example is going to benefit him in some way. Keep this in mind. Another audience is the disbelievers. So this, uh, this example will comment on them in some way. But there's also a third audience in the first passage. Who's that? The one lone unknown who? Believer. Somewhere out there. We don't even know. He just fears Allah in the unseen. Ar-Rahman in the unseen. That one. That believer will find inspiration in this passage somewhere. So those three audiences are going to learn lessons, each of them, for themselves in this history. Now we begin. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرِيَةِ The town. Give them example of the town. How did Allah describe Quraysh? Did He describe them as the nation? He described them as a nation. And everybody knows who they are, and still Allah made them unknown, like you are insignificant, a nation. And nobody knows what this town is, but instead of saying a town, He called it the town, because this example is more significant than you people. See what Allah made important and what Allah made unimportant? Just by using al qarya If جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ When those who were sent came to it. Now I want you to think about my language. It's, it's going to be hard to explain, but I'll try to make it easy. Give the example of the people of the town when messengers came to it. People of the town when messengers came to it. What is it? The town. I was expecting Allah to say, give the example of the people of the town when messengers came to them. Yes? But instead of coming to them, Allah says they came to it. What's the difference? Does it make a difference? Absolutely it does. If you came to them, then all the only concern you have is them. If you came to it, that town will be around for generations. They will not be around for generations. But what should be around for generations? The town. Messengers come so they can give guidance to the people in front of them and through them their children and their children and their children and their children. They are concerned with the much larger audience, the longer ramifications of da'wah. So they don't just think about the short term. If they only thought about the short term, it would have said they came to them. But Allah says no, they came to it. They want this town to survive. Messengers don't come to destroy towns. Messengers come to sustain towns. These towns were already on the verge of destruction. They had already, people think, when messengers come, Allah destroys towns. That's how our formula works in our head. That is Im immature. Mes nations were already about to be destroyed because of their sins. Messengers came as a last hope. Fix yourself. They didn't come to destroy, they came to fix. And then people start blaming the messengers. Because of you we got destroyed. Actually, you were heading down Terminal Cancer Road all on your own. You were heading down that road all on your own. The messengers were actually an act of mercy, which has already been established in Tanzil al-Azizi al-Rahim. The messengers are supposed to be a mercy. Now, these three audiences, I already told you about how this town is supposed to be uh, significant and you, there's concern for the next uh, generation. Now look at the word al-Mursaloon. Al-Mursaloon. Just like إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ mursaleen The same word, isn't it? When, that, when I've discussed that second ayah, I told you the Prophet is being told Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he is part of a brotherhood. You remember that? And now the exact same word is being used again to remind the Prophet Sallallahu you are part of a brotherhood that have gone, gone down the straight path before. Now why don't you take inspiration from your brothers? So now, I told you there are three audiences. And the first of them is who? The Prophet ﷺ. And now he's already paying extra attention, and it's more relevant to him now, because this is his people. This is his team, his brotherhood, Al-Mursaloon. إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِ مُثْنَيْنِ When we sent two to them. Wait, Allah sent two messengers? To one town? فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا Then they called both of them a liar. فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثٍ Then be reinforced with a third. Now Allah sent how many messengers to one town? Three. Three messengers, one town. You know, who should be giving the first khutbah? Who should be giving the main speech? You know, who should be the final speaker? 
there's three of them, you know. So you know, the one who goes first should be less popular than the more, and then you go to the most popular speaker at the end, you know. There should be some kind of hierarchy. No. No. They see each other as reinforcements of each other. They're not in competition with each other. When you call people to Allah, you're not in competition with anybody else. You're only in cooperation with everybody else. Isn't that an important lesson to learn? And messengers are not small personalities. Messengers are big personalities. In one little town, how many big personalities? Three. There's room for three. Which means you're not that big of a personality. I'm not that big of a personality. There's room for more. <laughs> we need to understand something about calling people to Allah. Even messengers need help. Who do, we, who do I think I am or who do you think you are? You have to be able to accept help. Then understand that there, there was never any jealousy between them. All there was was cooperation. And then the question arises, what would a third one do that two couldn't do? Two of them tried, didn't work. And a third one, Allah says, I reinforced with a third. Then they all said, we have been sent towards you. We are the ones to, that have been sent especially towards all of you. They joined in one voice. So two became three. The question is, what's the point? The point is support. Even messengers need support. The two were lonely, and Allah wanted to reinforce them, and reinforce the mission, empower the mission. That's why He used the word azazna. So, even messengers need what? Support. Now, in history, messengers were supported by other messengers. The Prophet ﷺ does not have that luxury. Why not? Why can't he be supported by another messenger? Because he's the last one. But then when he hears this, he's thinking, what about my support? But that's already been answered. Because Allah's support, you know the word azazna? Even if you don't know Arabic, azazna. What name of Allah came from the same root? Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim. Allah has already given the Prophet support with his own words. Where messengers had to come to give support, my message comes and gives you support. He has given him Qur'an that is more powerful than any messenger could have been. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So now that's, that's their support, but that was his support. فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ Now the, other, the last point about this ayah that I want to make is that, you know, the, the fact that there were three of them, three of them, and nobody listened, is actually not depressing to the Prophet There's only one of me. There were three of them and they still didn't listen. <laughs> actually, it's the other way around. The fact of the matter is, now the Prophet is really able to understand that when people have a wall in front of them, and a wall behind them, and covers on top, doesn't matter how much you give them, they won't listen. Even if one town gets three messengers, it don't make a difference. The Prophet is now becoming clear through this lesson that his job for some people is just impossible. They just won't listen. What we call in Urdu, Deet Hadi. Now, قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا The people responded when they, when they told them, we are the ones that have been sent towards you. You are nothing but just flesh and bones like we are. بَشَرٌ Bashar in Arabic comes from Bishr. Bishr means skin. Your skin is just like mine. What makes you special? وَمَا أَنزَلَ الرَّحْمَانُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Ar-Rahman, the incredibly merciful, did not send anything. Not at all. What are you talking about? He sent some message. In antum illa takthibun. You all are nothing but, you're, you're doing nothing but making lies. All you people, all the three of you do, is make lies. Please, stop this lying business. In other words, now they're being ridiculed and called liars. You know, in the beginning of the surah, Allah validated the Prophet ﷺ and told him, no doubt you are a messenger, you are from among the messengers. Because people considered him a... Liar, and now it's spelled out. In the past, you're not alone. You were not the first one to be called a liar. Even three together with the same exact message were called liars altogether. Now let's dig into this ayah. This, you're nothing but a human being like us. What's the point of saying that? The message is supposed to be supernatural coming from the skies. So somebody complains, if the message is so super awesome coming from intergalactic space, then how come the person delivering the message doesn't have intergalactic powers? Why don't you give us a, an angel or somebody with superpowers or something? Because if it's a super message, there should be a superman type character to deliver that message. By the way, this is what they do with uh, Jesus. 
make him more than human, right? So the message should be accepted because he's more than human. This is what they did in, with the, the mythology of Superman. He's come from another planet with a message of peace. He gets his power from the sun, and he floats like this, all Jesus-y, right? That's what he does. So you know, the, the play on the word sun, by the way, like sun, you know, sun. Anyway, so the idea that the messenger, messenger himself has to be supernatural, you know what the Quran's response to that is? If a messenger, if Allah sent an angel, if Allah sent a jinn or something to give you a message, you would have said, uh, how are we supposed to follow this? This is relevant for angel. Obviously an angel can do it. How am I supposed to do it? And then Muslims turn this around and make the Prophet wasallam almost like an angel and say, yeah, but that was the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. That was the Prophet. This is just me. I can't do that stuff. Who do you think I am comparing me to the Prophet? I'm not comparing you to the Prophet ﷺ, but he came so he could be followed. Allah chose a human being so he could be followed. Not so he cannot be followed. You see, the praising the Prophet ﷺ has a place. But if you praise him to the point where you make him beyond human, then you won't be able to follow him anymore. ﷺ. That's why it has to be said. Now, now the thing is, when they said, you are nothing but a person just like we are, just flesh and bones, skin, just like we are, that's not exactly true, is it? He's not exactly like them, is he? In the beginning of the surah, Allah did explain that he is from the ones that are sent upon a straight path. What makes him different from others? Number one, that he's on a straight path. Number two, that he's not speaking on his own behalf. These are two things that make him different from this entire society. Actually, the Prophet himself was told in Surah Al-Kahf, إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Tell them I'm just a person just like you. But there's a difference. Yuha ilayya. That revelation has come to. There is a difference. They're not willing to acknowledge that difference. Now I need you to understand also that in the previous ayah, Allah said, فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثٍ What did Azzazna remind you of? What name of Allah? Okay, when you remember the word Aziz, which ayah do you remember? Tanzeel al Aziz al Rahim. But how many names of Allah were in that ayah? Two, Al-Aziz, Al-Rahim. Look at this next ayah. وَمَا أَنزَلَ الرَّحْمَنُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Which name came up? Al-Rahman, which is related to which name? So Allah is reviewing Tanzeel Al-Aziz Al-Rahim in the story. He's, re he's reinforcing ideas. He's building it over again. So now he's, they, they say, Al-Rahman did not send anything at all. Why would they say that? Why would they say Al-Rahman didn't send? Why would they say Allah didn't send anything at all? Why did they say the, the incredibly merciful didn't say, send anything at all? As, as a matter of fact, this is sarcasm. This one you keep calling Ar-Rahman, what did he send? Yeah, this is supposed to be mercy? It's a joke to them. So they're speaking about Ar-Rahman in a joking fashion. You people, you're just, all you're doing is lying, please. Now I hear the last point I want to make in this 14th ayah, I think it's the 14th ayah, the 15th ayah is something about bosses. I hate bosses. You hate bosses too. You don't have to tell me. I know. Human beings don't like being told what to do. I don't like it when my teacher gives me homework in third grade. I don't like it. I don't like it when the cop tells me to pull over. I don't like it when the government tells me to pay tax. When the county tells me to pay property tax. too. I don't like it. I don't like it when the doctor tells me to take my medicine on time. I don't like it. I don't like it anywhere. I don't even like it when the lady tells me to put my seatbelt on in the, in the airplane or put my tray table up. You put it up. <laughs> we don't like being told what to do. We don't like it. As human beings say, who are you to tell me? You're just like me. Even in small things, siblings, siblings. Hey, could you give me that? Get it yourself. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. <laughs> and it starts. What'd you say? And then, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so then, if that's human nature, we cannot accept, we don't like authority. This is not a Muslim, non-Muslim thing. This is just a human thing. We don't like it. You know, guys are playing basketball. Some uncle comes. He says, really late. Mm. 
I'm like, I hate that uncle. That's the Adhan uncle. <laughs> if that's our nature, then when a messenger comes, a messenger is not asking you to obey him in small things. A messenger, if you accept him, he's going to dictate everything you do in life, isn't he? He's going to tell you how to sleep, how to wake up, what to say, what not to say, when to pray, when not to pray, what to do, what not to do, how to get married, how to get divorced, what should you do when you, when you live, what should you do when, you, when you're dead, how should you be buried, how should you think about your ancestors. Not only what you say, he should t he's going to tell you what to think. He's going to tell you what to love. He's going to tell you what to hate. Isn't he? That's a lot of authority. Human beings don't like what? They don't like authority. So they say, you're just a person. How can I accept your authority? How are you any better than me? Excuse me? I need my freedom. You're not the boss of me. And that's not a new thing. You know, some, some teenager didn't come up with that one. It's always been there. It's always been there. It's in the Quran, the Quran. You people are lying. Please. This entire idea, this notion of a messenger having a higher truth puts a messenger in a different pedestal and human beings don't like other human beings on a pedestal. We can't accept it. This was the reason for his rejection. They respond. And the way they respond is so epic. They said, Rabbuna ya'lamu, our master, in fact, he knows inna ilaykum la mursalun, that we truly are the ones sent towards you. Whether you know it or not, or you accept it or not, who already knows it? Allah does. We don't need validation from you, we get validation from Allah. Is that a review of something we already learned? That he doesn't, a messenger doesn't need validation from people, he gets validation from Allah? Did that come before? وَالْقُرْآنِ الْحَكِيمِ إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Now that's being reinforced. Even these messengers knew that their validation comes from Allah. This is review, review for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And by the way, now they've been rejected already. They've been told you're liars. So this, the next time they respond, this is the second time you find the words إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ But this time you find... Is that a child screaming? And now he stopped. Oh, it's a baby. Babies are cute. Okay. Inna <laughs> ilaykum. Most babies are cute. <laughs> Hope that is a cute baby. I know it's mean, it's mean. But I have six kids. I can say it. Some kids come out looking 90 years old. They do. <laughs> You're supposed to say, mashallah, not to be rude. That kid just got offended. <laughs> <laughs> Other kids like really come out cute. Like our last one, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I told my wife, uh, what happened here? <laughs> and then, and then the kid got cute later. I was like, okay, you're okay now, you're okay. Because they, 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 you know, it's like a prune that, it's like, you know how grapes turn into prunes? But it's actually the other way. The prune turns into a grape, it's the other way. I could talk like that, it's completely fine. Um, and you're free to be offended, that's okay too, because I don't live here. Okay, so, so, what I was saying was, they don't just say we are messengers to you, they say we truly are messengers to you. La mursalun, you'll notice a lam is there, that wasn't there before. And that's because now they're refuting them, and they're engaged in debate. Things are getting heated, and the heat of the argument is being captured in the lam. Inna ilaykum la mursalun. Wa ma alayna illa al-balahu al-mubeen. There's our only responsibility. There's no responsibility on us at all except clear communication. The messengers are saying, no responsibility falls on our shoulders except clear communication. Now what does that mean? That means they're on a, they have one task and one task alone is to communicate, to stay on the straight path and say what even some might find offensive, but say it anyway, even if it gets them in more trouble and more trouble and more trouble, they have to stick to it because that is their job. And they cannot waver from those words, they have to say them clearly and openly. They cannot fluctuate. Has that been something already taught in the surah? Ala siratim mustaqim. You see how the Quran is tight? How it reviews its concepts, how it reinforces. Allah said in the beginning, the Quran is well knit. It's one of the things I want to show you here, is how these ideas, they keep reinforcing themselves and building on top of each other. So now, 
The, the second is that, you know, لَا عَلَيْكُمْ حِسَابَنَا أو حِسَابُنَا فَلَا نَقِفْ You don't, you're not in charge of us, we can't stop. We have an obligation on us, we have a duty upon ourselves to deliver clearly, to communicate clearly. Where did that duty come from? It came from the fact that they are mursaleen. They have been sent with a mission, which was something taught previously as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching these videos. If you'd like to continue to support Quran Weekly, please click the link in this video.